Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Learn Selenium using C Sharp and Visual Studio Code. Um, today we will uh, discuss about um, how we can use page object uh, model or pattern in in writing a Selenium scripts. In previous model, we learned how to use um, tests annotation. Um, and also order our test um, in Visual Studio Code. Today, um, we will learn how we can utilize page object model uh, and the base page which we have developed in previous model, previous class, um, how we can integrate uh, those together. Um, and today, we will discuss about these two things. So let's start with it. Um, as you can see, in previous class we discussed about having a base page where we do test setup. So in page object model, one of the best thing is to segregate all the UI um, page objects in one folder. So today uh, we will take the same example of logging into yahoo.com as a login page and we develop a small um, class file. Um, called page object so what I'll what I'll be showing you today is basically when I develop a page object um, for the login class how we can utilize this base page and how the driver instance will be transferred to the page object and in turn how the test uses the page object driver instance ultimately to execute the tests so so according to the page object each page is a different page object um, each ui screen is a different page so to do that what i will do is i'll first create a folder um, called page object and let's call page object as yahoo login since we are dealing with the CA and login, you have a login page. So, yeah, yes. <clears throat> so, before we um, put anything here, one of the main thing is to um, install one of the Selenium package that we need. So, let's do that. The Selenium package, Yanunit package we need is um, page factory, which initializes the web elements. So since we will be dealing with the web elements um, in, in Yahoo login page, we need to initialize the driver so that we can run the tests. So for that, to initialize the web elements, we can make utilize of one of the uh, Selenium um, package called page factory uh, dot init elements method. So to get that, First, we need to install a small uh, package called um, extras. So I think .NET Selenium extras, which is .NET Selenium extras page object .core. So let's install this. Let's pick up the this version. So if you see this, okay. So we have now installed the package. Brilliant. Um, so let's create our page, page object. For that, um, all we need is sample of a page object. So I'm going to use um, the, I'll copy the same page object, a base page, and put it in here just to. So all I need to change this link work to my students as it is. And the class page is Yahoo login. Yeah. Um, so I will remove the rest of the cell. So all we have is Yahoo login. So now we have page objects. Um, so, see, so we are creating Yahoo login side page object. So we need to rename our workspace and page objects or page objects 
the folder name is page object obj yeah um we also need the selenium package like i talked about is selenium extras yeah i'll show you why we need this in, in a few seconds oh we we already have it i believe so don't need this okay so <clears throat> The first thing we need to do is um, extend base page. That's because our base page defines the driver here. It is a static driver, and we need the driver instance to be the same throughout our test execution. That's why to use our driver instance, I extend the base page. The next thing is to write a constructor. So I'll tell you why we need a constructor here. I have a web driver, driver, and so instead of using this, I will use this one. You can use this as well, but for convenience, I will use the class page itself. And this is where the new package comes to picture. So we can use page factory dot in elements. The arguments will be driver. We have the driver and this class file, which is basically this. Fair enough. Now we got to define elements. Now I've already captured elements in you know that text pad. All I'm gonna using this. So this is one of the elements which is next button, I'll show you later why. And the next element is, I'm going to capture an error message um, when I click the next button. This is the export web elements. So since we are defining our web elements here, the page factory, what it does is it will initialize these elements and keep it ready for your use. That's the reason behind installing the Selenium page object package and using a page object, object factory in edit elements so now let's write a simple method um, so the intention of this method is to get the error message after clicking the next button get sign in error message yeah. it doesn't take any arguments because it's supposed to return the element uh, uh, the error message. So what I will do is I will just click next dot click. So you must be wondering why I'm using next. So for that I'll just show you the what I will be doing here in the Google Chrome. Um, so yeah, this is the button I'm talking about, and I click next we are getting this error message. So that's the test. So click ne next, and then I want to wait for a couple of minutes. It's thread dot. I think we need to import that method. So system dot threading. Yeah. So ideally it's not a good practice, but for testing purpose, I'm just using so sleep for two seconds and then shrink error message equals to this one error dot text. So and then return the error message. Okay, now our function is ready. Um, so we have a small compilation, like a method, fair enough. Um, yeah, so now our method ready basically returns um, the error message. So just showed you um, in, in the UI. So let's use this page object in our class file. So what we'll do is here we'll call 
um, will modify this. So I will just remove everything here and I will rename this um, get error message test. So first we need to create an instance of the class. So for that, what I will doing is, uh, yes. So here we need to import the class, uh, which is basically, um, so in test file, we'll be, hang on, I'll have utilized that. Yeah, in test we have to still invoke this one. That's because we need to access the page object. So, page object. Now we should be use our login and yeah. We just declared the page object. The initializer should be done inside once the driver is initialized. So, Yahoo equals to new Yahoo login and as is expected, driver instance. So, we declare the page object and we initializing the page object here because here the driver initialized take place and once you initialize the driver, you can pass the page object. Those driver inserts to the page object. So let's call our method, which we wrote in the page object. So to do that, yahoo.getSite message. So it returns some string. So let's say string message equals to this, and let's print it at one line. Or let's directly assert the message instead of just pasting it. Assert on R equal. So this is the expected and the actual is message. So I have written the message here. Um, I think I've got the message somewhere here. Yeah. So, so let me purposely modify, remove the method. Um, now, our test is ready, and we have utilized our page object uh, method in here, and let's run the test. So, according to this, it should fail because we are purposely mismatching the expected and actual behaviors, messages. So let's run this. Okay. Right. All right. So if you see, it will go to yahoo.com, click, it will capture the message and it fail. Say it's expected this one, it's expected this one, but this one, which is fair enough. Um so let's copy this one and Purposely, all right. So now let's run the test again. So it will go. It will open the web page. It will click there. It will get the message. So test passed. So now you see that we created a page object login, Yahoo login, and we extend that base page to get the driver instance there. And now we call. We declare the page object and we initialize the page object here in our setup method. And once we initialized, you can access the methods you wrote in the Yahoo login page object to assert the error messages. This is how you can implement a simple page object pattern in your Selenium framework. So in the next video, I'll come up with the more elaborate approach uh, of page object uh, pattern part two. So hopefully, I hope you have um, got the basic idea of what is a page object model using this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment um, uh, in my channel. Thank you for watching my video.